All right, we're gonna read you a story about a person named Thomas A. Dorsey and uh, his experience of what he went through and thinking that maybe he needed to listen a little bit more to the Holy Spirit. And we're gonna run into those things in our lives that we question if I had only knew I would have done something different. So we're gonna read this story here about Thomas A. Dorsey. Back in 1932, and he's writing this himself, he says that he was 32 years old and fairly a new husband. My wife, Nettie, and I were living in a little apartment in Chicago's South Side. One hot August afternoon, I had to go to St. Louis, where I was to be the featured soloist at a large revival meeting. I didn't want to go. Nettie was in the last month of pregnancy with our first child. But a lot of people was expecting me in St. Louis. So I kissed Nettie goodbye, clattered downstairs to a Model A, and in a fresh Lake Michigan breeze, I chugged out of Chicago on Route 66. However, outside the city, I discovered that in my anxiety at leaving, that I had forgotten my music case. So I wheeled around and headed back. I found Nettie sleeping peacefully. I hesitated by her bed. Something was strongly telling me to stay. But, eager to get on my way and not wanting to disturb Nettie, I shrugged off the feeling and quietly slipped out of the room with my music. The next night in the steaming St. Louis heat, the crowd called on me to sing again and again. When I finally sat down, a messenger boy ran up with a Western Union telegram. I ripped open the envelope, pasted on the yellow sheet with the words, your wife just died. People were happily singing, and clapping around me, but I could hardly keep from crying out. I rushed to the phone and called home. All I could hear on the other end was, Nettie is dead, Nettie is dead. When I got back, I learned that Nettie had given birth to a boy. I swung between grief and joy, yet that night, the baby died. I buried Nettie and our little boy together in the same casket. Then I fell apart. For days I closeted myself. I felt that God had done me an injustice. I just didn't want to serve him anymore or write gospel songs. I just wanted to go back to that jazz world I once knew so well. But then as I hunched alone in the dark apartment those first sad days, I thought back to the afternoon I went to St. Louis. Something kept telling me to stay with Nettie. Was that something God? Oh, if I had paid more attention to him that day, I would have stayed and been with Nettie when she died. From that moment on, I vowed to listen more closely to him. But still, I was lost in grief. Everyone was kind to me, especially a friend, Professor Fry, who seemed to know what I needed. On the following Saturday evening, he took me up to Madame Malone's Poor Old College, a neighborhood music school. It was quiet. The late evening sun crept through the curtain windows. I sat down at the piano and my hands began to browse over the keys. Something happened to me 
And then I felt at peace. I feel as though I could reach out and touch God. And I found myself playing a melody, one I never heard or played before, and the words into my head, they just seemed to fall into place. Precious Jesus, take my hand. Lead me on. Let me stand. For I am tired. I am weak. I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Jesus. Lead me home. I feel God gave me these words of melody. He also healed my spirit. I learned that when we are in our deepest grief, when we feel fathers from God, this is when he is closest and when we are most open to his restoring power. And so I go on living for God, willingly and joyfully, until that day comes when he will take me and gently lead me home. Did you ever feel that you had listened to the Holy Spirit, that things would not have happened the way they did? That when friends or family have passed away, sometimes we blame ourselves because we felt that we could have done more? If only had I listened to the Holy Ghost. Jesus does not want us to be discouraged, but through every circumstance learn and grow spiritually. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So even in our times with COVID-19 going through the whole world and the election of the President of the United States is upon us, and with so much corruption in the government and voting fraud, we can still lean upon Jesus and pray. And even though the President of the United States has got COVID-19. What does it say for us to do? We are to pray for our leaders. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us go to Jesus today, who can give us peace and justice, and pray that the right president of the United States will be voted in office, and that the new Supreme Court justice that has been appointed will be voted in, if God be willing. That the people who are voting for the right president will all vote, and the ones who are not voting for the right one will be discouraged to vote. The Word of God tells us to pray for our leaders and the knowledge of Jesus the Christ who can make peace. 1 Timothy 2, 1, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving them thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 
For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Whereunto I am an ordained preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. And it's time for us to pray. We live in a world of this corruption of our government and the choice of who's being picked will decide we may not even be able to go to church in our freedom that we have anymore if the wrong person is voted in. We want the right person voted in. We want all those who voted for the right one to vote. We want all those who are voting for the wrong one, we're praying that God discourages them to vote. We don't want their votes. We want the will of God. Don't you want the will? Can you pray that you want the will of God? That's what all churches should be praying for, isn't it? The will of God. Let's stand. Let's hold their hands. Holy hands up. <laughs> and let us pray for our government. For us. Where we stand. We have the chance to pray. Don't make it so that you didn't pray and you feel, oh, if I could have just prayed and asked God to help. The Lord in heaven, we're coming to you in the time of our need. We're coming to you in the time of our government, which is in a practically chaos. Lord, we want peace and we want the right president to be in office. Again, Lord, we're praying to you that the people who are voting for the right president will all vote. The people who are voting for the wrong president against your will will be discouraged to vote. Lord, we want it to, we're putting everything in your hands. You said for us to pray. And we know the president has COVID-19. We heard that he is doing well, but Lord, we want a speedy recovery. We want him well. We don't wish any ill things for him. We want to praise your holy name in all things. In Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen.